My name is Fergal Quinn. I'm a lecturer here in the journalism department and uh, the course director for the MA in journalism and MA in journalism sport. So I'll be talking for a few minutes um, th this morning about how the course is set up and how we go about teaching, um, you know, what we look for in students and things like that. And um, we'll then have a, a 20 minute taster class uh, where I'll just be giving you a session on a, 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 a short session on, a, on, a, on an element of uh, something that we've been focusing in the uh, TV module, um, that of editing. I suppose as a starting point this morning, um, I, I, I want to ask you to think about for a second, um, you know, what is journalism? Um, lots of definitions, lots of opinions, good and bad, in terms of what journalism uh, is or, or, or what it might be. For, for me, uh, journalism uh, serves a critical function in society. Journalists work to show people uh, what's going on in the world around them. The product of journalism or news gives people the information that they need to know to make informed decisions. Um, it gives people information that they, that they need to know to make inform, informed decisions, like in, information about where their taxes go, um, who goes to prison and, and why, you know, are, are our laws working in that regard? Um, are our hospitals, is our health service functioning well? And if not, why? And if it's not functioning, in what way is it not functioning? Who are the people that have the power over these matters? And why do they make the decisions that they do? Um, journalists believe that all of these decisions have to be made in a very public way. Um, this way that the people who these decisions affect um, know what's going on and can have a say in it. Um, I, ideally uh, via the ballot box, you know, when you vote in an election or, or whatever. Uh, again, the French philosopher put, put, uh, Denis uh, Diderot put, put it very well um, when he when he talked about journalism and he, and he put it that all things must be examined, debated, investigated without exception and without regard for anybody's feelings. So I, I, I think that's a that, that's 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 a nice um, definition of, 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 of what journalists, what the, the principle of journalism is about. Um, for journalists, that information is free is the most important principle of, of all. Um, it's, it's a guiding principle that drives how we teach journalism here, um, that information is free, that information is truthful, and that we communicate truthful information in a way that engages the public. Okay, so we want people on our program that have qualities that can help them achieve um, that as uh, you know what I've just talked about as, as journalists. Um, so I suppose the kinds of qualities that you need to be a journalist I, 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 or that we look for in, in terms of people who are applying to do a course like this. Um, we want people who are curious. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a core thing. Are, are, are you curious? Are you the kind of person who asks questions? Um, are you the sort of person who just wants to know what's going on behind the scenes? Um, and, you know, sometimes are, are you obstreperous about that? Are you one of those annoying people that, that, that always asks quest questions? Um, are you passionate about the truth? Um, you know, what the actual truth behind things is? And are you concerned about the lack of it sometimes when you look around society or, you know, when, when you listen to politicians or um, things on television? Are you concerned about um, is, is, is that truthful or th 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 that's not right? And I, I, I want to get behind that. Um, are you interested in storytelling? I mean, that, that this is a key thing. Um, are you interested in telling stories? Uh, do, do you like hearing stories? Do you like telling stories, big and small, in all kinds of mediums? So whether that's that's writing or um, you know on uh, via radio or on camera or whatever. Um, so are you interested in storytelling? Are you creative? And again, you know, are, are you creative in terms of how uh, you communicate things? Are you good at communicating complex ideas? And I suppose, are you driven? Do you have a drive? Do you have a passion? Um, do you have a desire to do journalism? Because like this is a, it's, th this course is quite intense. It's quite hard. Uh, you'll need a certain toughness to, to get through it and to certainly a, a certain toughness and drive to establish yourself um, in 
but is a very tough and competitive industry. So if you've got a mix of the above, so curiosity, passion, interest in storytelling, creativity, drive, um, we want you. <laughs> we want you on this course. Um, so that is what we want from you. But what can you expect from us, um, from, from us here in the journalism department? What skills should you expect to develop on this course? So I'm just going to go through a few of those um, key skills. So the key skills that you will develop um, during the year here in um, in the UL journalism departments. Uh, the, the, the first one, news writing, reporting, interviewing. Uh, so again, reporting on courts or council meetings, scandals and disasters, reporting accurately and at speed and being able to adapt efficiently to different platforms. So you go to an event and can you can you write a couple of hundred words for the, the website? Can you do a, a radio report and a, a TV report at speed? Um, so adapting efficiently to different platforms. Um, you learn to produce all kinds of broadcast journalism, um, whether it's television, radio or online. Um, again, shooting, recording, editing, presenting, producing, all of the different skills that go into creating um, radio journalism and television journalism, um, you, you learn about them and the basics of, of, of how to do those. Uh, investigative reporting, how to get at the information that's hidden. So it's one thing to make sense of information that's already out there, but how do you dig and find the information that, that isn't necessarily, uh, you know, that, 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 that isn't public or that um, people in power don't want to be, to, to be public. So um, sports journalism, um, a key, aspect of uh, that, 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 that we offer. We offer a bespoke pathway for people who want to focus on sports journalism. Um, so again, more, more details on that on, on the website, but essentially there are different, uh, th these are separate modules for people who want to focus on sports journalism. So there are pathways for people who want to focus on news and focus on sport. Um, so again, on this course, you work on real life projects with actual physical output that you make radio and TV uh, news programs that you produce an actual uh, newspaper and 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 website that rather than exams that you're that that you're that you're working on projects that produce uh, 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 portfolio pieces essentially that that by the, by the time you graduate you have you have a portfolio of work that's that's publishable and that that you can show to uh, editors and things well and, and people like that when you're applying for jobs um so aside from all that, you're, you, you, you also learn about the, the, the legalities around what can and can't be published and not just the legalities, but the, the ethics. So even if it's legal to publish something, is, is it right? Um, so the, the media law and ethics um, around uh, journalism um, work. So this course is very much practice rather than theoretically oriented. You learn by doing, guided by 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 teachers and instructors who have vast industry experience across various mediums. Again, the classes are small, so you'll get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time uh, with, with your journalism lecturers during your time here. Again, the classes are 15 to 20 people um, and, and less actually for, for some of the modules. Again, we've dedicated academic staff and also top industry figures who assist us and, and, and help us teach on the programmes, um, like current and past adjuncts. Um, connected to uh, uh, UL journalism includes Ortiz, Brian Dobson and Jackie Hurley, Fergal Keane of the BBC, Tony Lean, the, the sports editor of the Irish Examiner. So they ensure that we remain in touch with the media industry um, and innovations as they're happening on the ground. You know, innovations in media are happening really fast all the time. And they also, uh, our, our adjuncts give you a, an invaluable chance to, to network with key movers and shakers in the industry. So. That's uh, so. Look, that's that's the the overview, I suppose, of of what journalism is and what we look for from prospective students and the key skills that we would hope um, and that we would expect you to develop um, over a year on this program. So, um, so we thought it'd be a useful exercise today, rather than telling you um, about what we teach, to to just give you a small taster of this in action. Um, so. I, I, again, this uh, just a slight health warning on this in, in that the, the teaching that we do is, is, is normally quite dynamic and over and back and uh, it's a discourse between me and the students. So 
um, in this instance, for it to be just all one way and, and me talking and uh, teaching something is, is, is a bit odd, but, but bear with me. Um, and and um, so here is just a small section of a class on, uh, 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 on the TV journalism module that you do in uh, the, 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 the second semester of the MA. And this is just where we introduce the basics of editing. Um, so uh, editing for television, I suppose. Um, just bear with me. OK, so. Um, so. Journalism. Is about freeing information, OK, so. Freeing information up. And telling truthful stories with that information. Um, but to let. For anyone to read or to listen or watch that truthful story that you've uncovered and that you've that you've written up or designed, you have to engage them first because you know there's there's there's, there's so much information out there in the world, and you have to engage your audience before they 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 they, they, they listen to 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 what you found out. So you have to engage the audience, and editing is at the heart of how we engage audiences. It's at the heart of how you tell a story. And before you get to the process uh, by which we edit for television specifically, i.e. that's editing audio and visual for TV news, uh, using computer programs to organize audio and visual material into a, a, a story, you have to think about what editing is and why we do it. So, so I suppose, the first question that 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 we ask them is what is editing? OK, so like what is editing to you? Um, quite a few definitions you could come up with in terms of like what, what it is to edit. But for me, editing is essentially selection and omission to tell a story. It means. Choosing the material that best helps to tell the story selecting some information and omitting what is unwanted or what's not needed, maybe boring, extraneous, uh, repetitive detail. So it's the same, you know, if you're writing a piece, you're you're selecting the best parts and maybe you're leaving out the most, the, 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 the repetitive or uninteresting parts for a radio show, even in conversation. If I want to engage you with the story, sometimes I, I might draw you in with the question or, or build up to the punchline of the joke or the story or whatever. Um, so you change around the order of the way that you tell a story to, to make an anecdote more exciting or engaging. Now think of a TV journalist specifically then. Um, what are the elements that they have to that they have to to, 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 to work with? What is the raw material for a TV story? That's what I want you to think about it. So think about it. What's the raw material um, that you need to tell a story for television? Um, so if you were to think about that, you might think, OK, um, it's a story about uh, the coronavirus in Limerick. You're, you're thinking about interviews with people that are affected, interviews with people who've been sick or uh, relatives of people who've been sick or died or doctors or whatever. So interviews with the key people, shots of what the story is about, um, lots of different uh, visuals and images of what the story is about. Again, we're, we're editing for TV, so we need audio, we need visuals and we need to assemble it into a story. Um, so interviews with key people, shots of, of the story, so in, inside hospitals and in, uh, clinics or, or whatever. Uh, voiceovers, so the, the journalist telling the story um, via a voiceover, so, uh, uh, so a piece to camera, maybe the journalist reporting from the scene. Um, so you got interviews, lots of shots of what's going on. The, 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 the journalist giving the voiceover, which kind of tells the story, connects the pieces and maybe a piece to camera where the journalist reports from the scene. So you gather all of these elements um, and then you select the best parts. And then. You assemble. This picture and sound information into a sequence. Which makes sense and one which hopefully engages your audience. Um, so. Quick question to consider. <clears throat> In terms of editing, at what point do you start thinking about the edit of the TV package and how it will all fit together? So at, at what point do you start thinking about editing? Um, a lot of people kind of think that you consider that you go out and gather the stuff and then you start thinking about the editing when you bring it home and start putting it together. But 
when, when it comes to TV, you're actually thinking about the edit of the piece right from the get-go. So you're, you're thinking about the story before you go out, you're thinking about a way in which it might fit together. Um, so you kind of have a version of the, a, a very rough edit of what you think, how you think the piece will work in your head to begin with. Now it's obviously speculative at this point, but it means there's a focus and efficiency to work to your workflow when you actually go out reporting. So you're not just interviewing uh, loads of doctors and forgetting to interview um, yeah, patients or relatives and things like that. You're not just shooting, uh, the, 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 coming back with a hundred shots of a hospital and no shots of uh, ambulances or, 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 or things like that. So you're thinking about the edit before you go. So th there's a focus to your workflow when you're out shooting and gathering the material. Um, when you're reporting. So you're thinking of the ingredients you need and a version of how you might fit them together right from the get-go. This is really important um, when it comes to TV journalism. So let's put this into action, shall we? I think it's important to see this stuff in, in, in action to some degree uh, before you can make sense of it. So here's a local idea for a local, we'll say uh, a, a, a local TV story, maybe for a quite a local audience. So we'll say it's a Lego exhibition. OK, so uh, a, a Lego exhibition, um, if you just look look through the slide there. So the bare details of what you get via the press release. OK, there's a Lego exhibition. It's on the concert hall in Limerick from tonight. Um, and Nathan Sawaya's The Art of the Brick exhibition is created with millions of Lego building blocks, and it's unique in its scope, which ranges from new conceptual uh, pieces to replicas of classical artwork. OK, so you're thinking immediately, um, OK, this is a TV story, uh, potentially. Why? Because Lego is colourful, because people are kind of interested. It, it, it will engage a young audience in particular, and it's not a, the kind of story that will leave the news, but it will certainly be interesting at some point in the news. So take, take a couple of seconds, we'll just pause for a couple of seconds and think for a story like that, so a Lego exhibition, what elements would I need to tell a TV story about this? Um, now, so take a minute, think story, think visuals, think, think sounds, um, and just take a minute and uh, think about what, what elements you would need to tell a story like this. Well, I, ideally, I'd be able to hear from you individually, but uh, that's not possible in this format, unfortunately. Take a few seconds. So if you're telling a story about a Lego exhibition that's about to open. Sounds, visuals, shots. So, OK, so you've thought about that and even, uh, hopefully you've scrolled down a, a, a couple of ideas. Um, so. It might. Look something along these lines, if you were to kind of uh, do a little uh, uh, an ideas tree before you go out, uh, might look uh, something like that. So if you start, if you start there at the bottom left, I, I, I can't. Uh, is, is there a little? Uh, tool to uh, no uh, to, to point out things, but look at the bottom left. So an interview with Sawayed, so the, 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 the creator, the, the main guy behind this exhibition, you'd, you'd definitely be thinking, OK, I want an interview with him, wouldn't you? Um, you want lots of shots of the Lego art, uh, so ab ab above, so the second from the left. So C-U-M-S-L-S, so close ups, medium shots, long shots of the art itself. Um, what kind of sounds would you want? You want sounds of people. Um, inside or outside the exhibition of people putting it together, maybe um, other sounds that you need a uh, voiceover from the journalist. So the journalist telling the story. Um, um, uh, you know, you you, uh, uh, you you might want to use music um, to, to a, a light uh, piece like this. You might consider uh, 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 putting a, a music track at the beginning and the end. And you definitely want shots of uh, the, some of the pieces being put together if, if, if possible. And ideally, you might want a piece to camera of the reporter at the exhibition. So talking from the exhibition or outside the exhibition or inside or, or, or whatever. Um, so you would have, uh, so there is some of the, the, the key elements. Now, 
let's see a kind of a version of this story in action then. So that's that's the maybe the vision you'd have before going out to do it. So let's see uh, the job that a journalist did in terms of delivering this piece. So we're just going to watch a, a, a short package. Kian, can you uh, line that up there? Um, so it's a, just about an 80 second package delivering that story. And I, I, I want you just to pay attention while you're watching it um about uh, pay attention to the the, the elements that the, the reporter uses to tell the story it's called the art of the brick although these brush strokes are more to do with dust than design Doing really clean. <laughs> Good. this one of more than 70 sculptures being ready for display in dublin they've been made by this man a one-time lawyer who never lost his love for Lego. I had Lego bricks as a kid, uh, but I grew up wanting to be an artist and explored all different types of art media. And one day I just thought, what about this toy from my childhood? Could I create large-scale sculptures using Lego? Yes, he can, but constructing works like this isn't child's play. For a life-size human form sculpture, it's going to take about 20,000 Lego bricks for me to complete it. And that can take two to three weeks worth of work. Some of these works of arts are replicas of art history, famous works of art that I've replicated out of Lego bricks. Other things are more original works that I've come up with over the years and tried to just explore using this toy to hopefully inspire. The exhibition opens tomorrow at the Ambassador Theatre and runs for several months. Philip Bromwell, RTE News, Dublin. So, and okay, so, um, just bear with me here. Okay, so it should be, uh, should have to get the, the slide back again. So hopefully that fades okay for you and the sound is okay, etc. cetera. Um, apologies if it didn't. Um, so, um, so again, you're looking at a piece like that and now that's just one way to do the story um like if, if we were having a discussion about how to do a story like this we'd come up with lots of different versions but the main elements of that i just wanted to talk through a couple of elements of it um okay for some reason i don't seem to have control here Kane. um okay Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So, uh, so, sorry that 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 just froze for a second. Hopefully, it's working okay now. Um, so again, uh, some of the, some of the main elements that uh, so um, so so the the first one on the left. So the, again, interview with the creator here, this Nathan Sawaya guy. So that was uh, the the main focus of the piece. Um, uh, another element, the the tight voiceover, the, the the good scripting and clever wordplay. Again, you know, just lines like, uh, but constructing works like this isn't child's play. So playing off words, um, it's called the art of the brick. Although these brush strokes are more to do with dust than design. So, 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 so riffing off different uh, the, 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 uh, the different ideas connected to Lego and things like that. So, um. Sound. So, I mean, the, the the tricky aspect, and it's 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 a it's a really important aspect for it for for any type of package is that you have audio uh, 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 that you need visuals and you need to be creative in terms of audio. And so, uh, an unmoving Lego exhibition, it can be you have to get creative about the the audio that you come up with. So, in this instance, uh, you had he used sounds of workmen, of bricks being moved, and things like that, of brush strokes, um, and the fourth aspect of that package I wanted to draw attention to was like how many shots were in the piece. And there was actually 23 different shots in that 83 second piece. So if you, if you think about it, that's about four seconds per shot, three, two or three or four seconds per shot. So eight close ups, eight MS uh, uh, medium shots. Uh, sorry, actually, that that's the <laughs> the numbers are slightly added up wrong. I, I think there's about 10 close ups and, and 10 medium shots and a couple and then two or three wide shots. I'm, I'm almost certain there was 23 shots in total. Um, and again, that package was all achieved um, using an iPhone. 
uh, a tripod and a label mic. So all quite uh, the tools that you pretty much have in your pocket and you can get a, a label mic for about a tenner on Amazon and a tripod for about 15 quid as well. Um, so ag again, that was all shot with a, with an old iPhone actually, that package is a couple of years ago. So let's get back to the mechanics then again. Um, so what does the end result of looking at a package like that tell us about how we add it, uh, or how we edit, should I say? Um, it tells us the ingredients that we need, I suppose, um, which are uh, interviews with key people. We need lots and lots of shots and B-roll, and we need audio breaks, bits of natural sound that brings us to the location. Um, um, and uh, finally, we need, a, we, we need a clever voiceover and a smart script gives context and a clear narrative with the beginning, middle and end. So we gather all of these bits um, with phone plus tripod plus mic, and then we import all of these bits into a digital editing software package on our computer, whether it's Avid, Adobe. Um, here in UL, we use Final Cut Pro, it's kind of an industry uh, standard. But most, most editing programs are fundamentally quite similar in terms of the process. Um, so you gather all the ingredients as discussed above, I suppose. You import your material from the device into the, uh, like the device you, you, you gather the material, i.e. your phone, your camera or, or, or whatnot. Um, you take the material off that device, you bring it into a computer program on the computer program that you, you edit. Again, it's your selecting bits, you're reordering them, uh, you're shortening, you're mixing, you're rearranging, uh, you're, 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 you're adding bits, you're, you're taking away, um, all with the ultimate aim of telling a clear, simple and truthful story in a way that engages the audience. Uh, and when you've it all put together at the end, you share in a form that people can play on their phone, on their computer screen, or that plays well on a, on a television, usually an MP4. And you release it via YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or, 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 or whatever way you like that people can access it and, and watch your story at the end. So I suppose a few key takeaways then about editing uh, to, 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 to finish up um, really, I, I, I suppose just to reiterate a couple of points that we've made here. Um, so just starting from the, the, the bottom left, uh, the, the, sorry, that you're labeling clips. Okay, that's not something we would, but essentially that editing, again, is selection and omission to tell a story. Um, that the, the process above that is that you're importing, you're editing and sharing. Um, uh, above that, that editing is generally about straight cuts from shot to shot, straight cuts, no fancy fades or transitions. Um, a straight cut from one shot to another maintains a forward narrative flow. Okay, um, how long should each shot be? And that's this is a, a key question. That how you know should I keep a shot for three seconds for ten seconds? And the answer is the speed of a newsy news item is determined by the edit. Um, an action movie has more edits than a love story, that there's, there's more cuts between shots. Um, and, and ditto with news. A, sh a short piece can drag if it's too few edits. Alternatively, too many, too, uh, if, if, if there's too many cuts between shots, it can be uncomfortable. So how long should each shot be? So in part, it depends on how speedy you want the item to be. And it, in part, it depends on what's in the shot. Each shot must run to its natural length. Okay, I know that's a bit of a how long is a piece of string um, answer, but the natural length of a shot depends on the shot. A static shot with not much going on in the frame will look tired after two or three seconds, um, whereas a shot full of action with people moving, um, things happening in the frame um, can run, you know, for six or seven or eight or even up to 10 seconds if it's interesting enough. Um, so, that's uh, that's uh, again uh, just uh, another point. Just uh, the, also on the uh, on the right that we use cutaways to disguise jump cuts. A jump cut is when an edit jars visually. Um, for it, you know that if you uh, that you're you're having to cut people uh, mid mid sentence and that that will cause a kind of a, a jump in the visual. So you use B roll to paper over those joins and things of like that. So that people um, don't really, that they, they almost don't see the edit. So editing, um, it's, so it's about using sound and pictures to complement each other. 
and instead of uh, hearing somebody talking about something that you're, you're you're seeing it as well. So I suppose to finish up with, okay, so look, that's we've kind of raced through um, a few kind of principles about the basics of editing, I suppose, which would kind of set us up to actually start working on a program to actually achieve um, the, the, to to actually edit a project into into a story, but. A, a key point I, I want to make before I, I finish up on this is that the best editing is invisible. Um, after a well, it, you know, if you do your job well as an edit, as, as an editor, should I say, the story just flows like it's the most natural thing in the world. Like, you know, that nothing has been edited at all. The quality of an editor's work should make that work almost entirely invisible. You never watch a news package and think, Oh, that editor did a really great job. You're just you're, you're just transfixed by the story and kind of carried along with it, and you you, you don't pay attention to how it's edited at all. Um, so it uh, so like I said, if you do your job well as an editor, it it kind of just disappears, and all the audience really sees is just a, 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 a truthful story, um, well told that engages them and that they remember afterwards. So just uh, I think before we wrap it up. Um, so just with my email at the end. So there's just a few uh, ex-graduates. There's Maria at the bottom, the class of 2017. Killian Sherlock, 2018. Ashton Maloney graduated in 2019. So they, they actually co-present news today on RT at the moment. Hilary McGann from 2015 is with CNN in London. Pamela Duncan, going back to 2014, is one of the key data journalists with The Guardian at the moment, actually. He has done pretty amazing work in terms of the COVID-19 uh, um, story as it's unfolded in, in Britain in particular. Um, again, we've graduates uh, everywhere really, RTE, Storyful, uh, local and national media, uh, Irish Examiner, uh, you know, Live 95, so local and, and national um, organisations. Um, so again, you can follow us on social media. So we've a dedicated YouTube channel, we're, 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 we have a Facebook page, we have uh, UL Journalism on, on, on Twitter, uh, we don't have a, a, a UL journalism specific Instagram page, but there is the the, the the UL one. So so do follow us on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube in particular. And if you want more information, I'm sure you will have uh, lots of questions if you're considering enrolling on the on the course. Um, get in touch with me directly, uh, fergal.quinn at ul.ie, and I'd be happy to to, um, to 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 chat even over the phone or via email um, if you if you have more questions. Um, uh, the things that can't be answered on the on the website, etc. So, look, I think that's 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 everything. I think that's that's all the time that I have. I'd be delighted to to chat more um, in the future via email and maybe see a couple of you um, here on campus uh, uh, come September. So, thank you, folks, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, enjoy the rest of the the event here today. Okay, so so thank you and uh, bye bye.